Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Uh, we're going to be talking about frequency distributions again, but now we're going to be going a little more into detail about their features. So, in the last lesson, we covered how to look at the data in Excel. So, there's a check mark off of that one. And we talked about how to go from data to frequency tables using our count if function, and from frequency tables to visualizations. But now we're going to take another look at those same examples that we looked at before, except now we're going to be talking about the features of these distributions. In particular, we're going to be looking at their shape. There are a couple of shapes you should know after this. Uh, one is uniform distributions. Another one is going to be called unimodal. Yet another is called bimodal. And a special one that we're going to be looking at called normal. We're also going to be talking about center. We're not going to be talking about how to calculate the center of the distribution. We're going to be talking about how to think about the center um, conceptually in three different ways. Mean, median, and mode. But we're not going to be talking about how to calculate it yet. Then we're also going to be talking a little bit about spread. How spread out is this distribution? And finally, we'll also mention outliers, gaps, and clusters whenever they're relevant. So recall example one. Here we looked at a data set of 100 Facebook friends, and we looked at whether more of these friends are born in a particular month or another. Note here that it really seems to be that no particular month is super popular. This is what we called a uniform distribution. If you sort of squint and blur your vision a little bit, it, it's almost like there's a flat line here, right? And everybody is sort of hovering close to that line. No one uh, month is more frequent in births than any of the other months by a lot. Um, some of these months are a little more frequent, but only by a little bit. You could see there's relatively little change from month to month here. Other uniform distributions also look, um, also look like this sort of rectangle or flat shape. And these distributions might be anything from deaths occurring on days of the week. Is there any reason to believe that one particular day is more favorable to die on than another? Um, or in rolls of a six-sided dice, um, is there a particular reason to believe that one side might come up more frequently than another? Uh, not if it's a fair-sided dice. All right. So remember, this is now example two. Um, in example two, we looked at the same data set again, and we looked at the age distribution in this sample. Here, we don't have a uniform distribution. No matter how much you squint your eyes, you're not going to see sort of a flat shape. You see a peak right here. And because of that, this peak, often called a mode, the most frequent member, uh, the most frequent value, um, this peak makes this a unimodal distribution. So in a, I'm not going to call it example two anymore. I'm going to call it a unimodal distribution. We'll add on to that. Not only that, but this shape is what we call skewed. So if I decide to just draw a little, a light little sketch over this guy, we see that it has this long, what we call tail. This tail goes out towards um, the right side, the, the larger values. Because it's skewed and the tail is to the right, we, called it, we call it skewed right. So it's not only unimodal, but it's also skewed right. You often have a skewed distribution when um, you have some sort of minimum or maximum value that these values are all bumping up against. So Facebook, I think you have to be 13 years old to sign up and maybe a lot of 14 and 15 year olds, their parents are not letting them sign up. So um, the bottom end of it, there's sort of a wall. Some, there's like an imaginary wall there. And um, the most popular, at least in our sample, seems to be in the 20s. 
And some of the older people use it. There's no limit on that. You could be 100 years old and still use Facebook. So um, since there's no limit on that, that tail can go on for a really long time. Now, these outliers out here, they are often called, um, you could think of them as oddballs, but we call them outliers. Tails are often made up of outliers. Note also that because this is skewed right, if we drew a line of symmetry from the mode, and we imagined folding this distribution on itself, we wouldn't have, um, we wouldn't have two sides that match up, right? So we call this asymmetric as well. So we learned a lot here. It's unimodal, it's skewed right, and it's asymmetric. All right, now here we'll learn yet another term. We see there are these gaps. These are called gaps, <laughs> nice and easy. And if we had a couple of people uh, clustered in a group, we call that a cluster. So a lot of these terms are pretty normal words that you would use in everyday life. 